Are you sick of changing your crosser every single day? You cannot find the perfect crosser that suits you the best. And will different crossers actually make your aim better and get you more kills? Well, today your Radiant Coach is here to teach you everything that you need to know about the crosser settings in Valorant. Before we start, my name is Charlatan, I'm the all-time Radiant player in Valorant from Closed Beta and private FPS coach that successfully improved thousands of Valorant and CSGO players in the last 7 years and I'm here to improve you as well. Right at the beginning, we have a few very important rules that you need to follow when it comes to Valorant crosser settings. Rule number 1. Make sure that your crosser is not obstructing your vision of the enemies. For an example, Example, when you're holding any angle, you always want to make sure that you see the absolutely first pixel of enemies when they are peeking you, or if you are engaging the enemies. Having extremely big, chunky crossers is never a good idea, even though this crosser is used only by the Sigma players. Rule number two, often changes of crosser are totally fine. This is one of the rare settings in Valorant that don't impact your consistency as a player, so you can have multiple crossers depending on which map, agent or weapon you're playing at that moment of time and you're going to see why this is important later during this video. Rule number three, never use any external software for your crosser. I've had multiple students in my coaching sessions on Discord that got banned because they were using third party software for changing their crosser, such as Valorant CC. There is no reason for you to risk your skins and your account for making your crosser more beautiful. Like, it's just stupid. And Vanguard, the anti-cheat of Valorant, is extremely intrusive and it can ban you for literally anything and any third-party program. Now, before we dive into Crosser Settings Guide, I'd highly recommend you to hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you don't miss any new important videos in the future. Make sure to leave a like and down in the comments share your personal crosser with the rest of our Tricksters community. Let's start with general crosser settings. Make sure to enable use advanced options so you can also adjust your aim down sights and sniper scope. I personally keep spectated players crosser off but you can enable this option if you want to see some weird ass crossers of your teammates and get absolutely tilted when charlatan is doing some kind of a challenge on his twitch live streams. Fade crosser with firing error means that when your recoil starts moving left and right during the spray your top reticle will begin to fade. This option can be extremely useful for players that have bad understanding of shooting techniques in Valorant. In Valorant most of the times you want to go for one taps or burst fire, and only sometimes you want to commit to the full spray. For an example this is the general recoil pattern for a phantom, and as you can see the first 8 bullets of the spray move only vertically with extremely low amount of horizontal shifts. After 8 bullets the recoil starts moving left and right, mostly in some kind of a random patterns which makes it hard to control. When you enable fade crosser with firing error, the top reticle fades as soon as the recoil becomes random. This means that if you stop spraying once the top crosser fades, your spray will be much more accurate and consistent. So when you're shooting enemies with phantom, most of the times you want to go for one taps or burst fire with only 8 bullets, because then you're only controlling the vertical spray of the weapon, and you just need to pull your mouse downwards to counter the upwards movement of bullets. This option can basically help you with mastering of this shooting technique. When you're in a gunfight with enemies and you want to use burst fire to kill them, as soon as the top reticle fades away, you should stop shooting. Reset the recoil of the weapon for a short period of time and then shoot again. So for an example, you peek the enemies around the corner, you whiff around 8 to 9 bullets and top of your crosser fades away. You should disengage that gunfight, make sure the top of your crosser is visible again while resetting the recoil of your weapon and then engage enemies again. 
This option basically reminds you when to reset the recoil of your weapon and when you should stop with your spray. But remember, spraying and fully committing to gunfights in Valorant is sometimes necessary, and I'll be teaching you how to master these shooting techniques in some of my future aim tutorials. Personally, I'd recommend you to use this option only if you have problems with your shooting techniques, otherwise just disable it. Moving on to primary crosser settings. As a Radiant coach, I've seen and tried multiple different crossers in Valorant, and I have a really good understanding of what is good and what is bad for your aim and consistency. When it comes to crosser color, I personally think that you should adjust this option based on enemy highlight color and maps that you're playing, for the best contrast and visibility. For an example, if you're using red enemy outlines, the green crosser will make the best contrast and your crosser will be fully visible. With purple enemy outlines, I'd recommend you using yellow or white crosser for the best clarity. And if you're using yellow enemy outlines, you should use something like a cyan color for your crosser. But we can also dive a bit deeper into this topic and change the enemy's highlight and crosser color based on different maps. So for an example, on map like Bind that is extremely boring with predominantly dark and brown textures, you should use yellow enemy outlines with cyan crosser. Why? Because that is going to give you the best contrast and visibility of enemies, crosser, everything basically. In order to find the best contrast between different colors, you can use this image as a reference point. Colors that are on opposite sides or far away from each other have the best contrast for better clarity. At the end of the day, the whole point of changing colors is to find what is the best contrast and visibility that works for your personal vision. From close beta, I've been using cyan crosser because it works extremely good with my personal perception and on top of that, Valorant maps have extremely small amount of blue colors, except Icebox of course. And for enemy highlight color, I've been using yellow to contrast the color of my crosser. Majority of pro players are using this same combination because it gives you the best clarity between different maps, enemies and your personal crosser. If you still have trouble with perfectly tracking your crosser with your eyes at all times, I suggest you to enable crosser outline for better visibility. But but if you're already using this option, I highly recommend you to never put the outline thickness above 1. Now when it comes to the design of the actual crosser, this is all personal preference, but I do recommend you to keep it as clean as possible and without any unnecessary elements that can obstruct your vision or mess up with your precision. In these examples, you can see some crossers that are extremely bad, because they are way too distracting for players and the whole purpose of crosser is to help you with your overall aim, while aesthetics of the crosser is completely irrelevant. Though one thing that is important is the size of the crosser. Small crossers, like for example the one that is Scream using, which is essentially just one small dot, are the best for players that are mainly playing in long range or medium range gunfights, relying on their one tap potential. This crosser is great if you're mainly using weapons like Sherry for Wendell, because it's going to force your body and mind to rely more on precision and kill enemies with one bullet to the head. On the other hand, CSGO type of crossers, the ones that have only inner lines and a small gap in between, are the most used ones in Valorant as well. For an example, this is the Tense Crosser, and it is perfect for any playstyle for one-tapping, burst firing, spraying, close range or long range gunfights. But when you're finding your perfect crosser, make sure that you can always understand where is the center of your aim, the center of your crosser basically. If the gap between crosser lines is way too big, like in this example, that can basically screw up your precision because you essentially have more room for the mistakes when placing your crosser on enemy's head. Personally, I feel that majority of players should never use the crosser offset that is above 3 or 4. Every crosser opacity should always be at 1, keep it fully visible and make sure that it is not way too distracting. Movement error of crosser is extremely beneficial if you have problems with understanding when you're fully accurate to shoot and kill your enemies. When this option is enabled, your crosser lines are going to widen up every single time while you're moving, and as soon as you stop, it is going to shrink down to its regular size. When the crosser is in the wide state, that means that you're 
your gun is inaccurate and you cannot shoot at your enemies. Once you stop moving, the crosser is going to shrink down again, and that means that your gun is completely precise and you can be precise while killing your enemies. This option can help you with practicing your strafe shooting techniques and jiggle picking enemies around the corners. It will make you fully understand how to incorporate proper movement with precision in Valorant. But, 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 when you're using this option, don't put it above 0.1 because it's going to make your crosser way too big and you won't fully understand where is the middle of your crosser. Once you master all of these techniques, I'd always recommend you to turn off this option because it's only going to distract you and there are no other benefits except learning the proper mechanics of Valorant. Personally, I love to play only with static crossers because they give you the most amounts of precision. When it comes to firing error, always turn this option off because it's completely unnecessary and you won't find any real benefits. End of the story. Override options should always be turned off and this is very important. When this option is enabled, the circle crosser of shotguns is replaced with your primary crosser. In my future weapon guide, I'm going to explain you why it is extremely beneficial to keep this option offline and why you should be playing with circle crossers instead. And as a final reminder, don't make your crossers way too chunky and big, because in long range gunfights you won't be able to perfectly position your aim at the enemy's head and it might obstruct your vision when you're holding the angles or engaging your enemies. For ADS crosser, you either want to use dot or smaller version of your primary crosser, because generally you should be using ADS only to fight enemies in long-range gunfights or to hold extremely tight angles, where your main focus is to be more precise and to kill enemies with one-taps. Moving on to the Sniper Scope Crosser. To stay consistent, I'd recommend you to change center dot color to the same color of your primary crosser. And as I mentioned before, you always want to keep the opacity of your crosser at 1, because it is going to be easier for you to understand when you're fully accurate. In my opinion, the center dot thickness should always remain below 1. The only reason to make this dot a bit bigger is if you're learning how to play snipers and bigger dot will allow you to notice faster when you're fully accurate. When this dot disappears, you are not precise, because you're probably moving a bit. When you stop moving, the dot will appear on your screen, which means that you're fully precise to shoot and kill your enemies. The bigger dot will basically allow you to learn the accuracy timing of sniper rifles a bit easier, because people react to bigger objects faster than smaller ones. The highest I would go here is 1.3, but once you're confident in your skill with snipers, just reduce this to 1 or below. Crossers are somewhat of a personal preference, and in order to fix your aim problems, you need to do some proper training routines. And for that, I can easily recommend you my perfect in-game training method with AimLab and Coax training routines combined. But I highly recommend you to follow all of the crosser rules that I've mentioned in this video. And if you still cannot decide which crosser to use, why don't you make multiple different crossers for different scenarios? For an example, if you're using Vandal and you think you're going to play long range gunfights on defender side in that specific round, use the dot crosser. If you're playing on attack and you're using Spectre, switch to a bit bigger crosser because that will make your spray control a bit easier. And the same thing you can do for colors as well. If you're playing on bind, use yellow enemy outlines with cyan crosser. If you're playing on icebox, switch to purple enemy outlines with yellow crosser for better contrast and clarity. The whole purpose of all of these settings is to have more visibility and clarity while playing Valorant. I personally use only two crossers because they are literally the best and they will make you a radiant player. Jokes aside, just my preference when it comes to my vision. In the description of this video, I'll leave the import codes for all the crossers that I've mentioned or used in this video, so you can try them out and maybe you'll find the one that suits you the best. And that's it for today's coaching session with Charlatano Papito. If you enjoyed in this video and want to see more of them in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn your notifications on, leave a like and comment. Follow me on twitch.tv forward slash charlatan for some epic Valorant live streams. Check Check out my other social media down in the description below and join my official Discord server if you want to hire me as your personal Radiant coach. I'm yours one and only Warden of the Tricksters community. Thank you for watching and cut, baby!